Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about flowchart and paragraph proofs. The benefit of flowchart and paragraph proofs is it allows us to outline our thoughts before we move into the formal two-column proof. A good visual for this comes from um, this peanut butter and jelly diagram. You're going to notice a couple of things. Obviously, peanut butter and jelly geometry might not have that much to do with each other, but the, the flowchart proof is a lot like this. What you're going to notice is the peanut butter, the, the bread, and the jelly are all the elements, all the components that we're putting together. So these are going to be like our statements. And as we move through this flow chart, we're going to notice that arrows connect the things that are related. I'm going to call it related stuff. And obviously, as we move down through this peanut butter and jelly diagram, we're going to see, you know, we get to the end and we've got the complete package. Well, that's what we're going to look at today when we talk about flowchart and paragraph proofs. First, we need to talk about the common segments theorem. The common segments theorem says that given collinear points A, B, C, and D arranged as shown, if A, B is congruent to C, D, then segment A, C is congruent to segment B, D. Our hypothesis then is A, B, is congruent to and CD we got that from over here so if this is true then the other parts true well then our conclusion is AC is congruent to BD let's think about this for a second AB congruent to CD so these little pieces well then I'm gonna say that this part is congruent to this part well, the common segment is BC. So if I, you know, just slap a little number on this and I said this is 2, 4, 2, does it make sense to say that if 2 and 2 are congruent, then 4 plus 2 is equal to 4 plus 2? Yes, it does. So that kind of thought process is what we're working with when we're talking about flowchart proofs. Let's look down at this first flowchart. Use the given flowchart to write a two-column proof of the common segments theorem. So we kind of know what's going on here. Let's start top left and move that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my statements and my reasons. Draw a semi-straight line down the middle. Actually a pretty terrible line. I'm going to redraw that. That's better. And my first statement is going to say AB is congruent to CD. That's my first step on my chart. And my reason is right below that it's given. My second one is going to follow from that. So the arrow tells me what follows from what. So I'm going to see, say AB is equal to CD. If I'm looking back up at my, my picture here, AB and CD are equal. Well, that makes sense. They're, you know, congruent. Definition of congruent segments. And number three, well, where do I go with three? Well, since I've already used these two, I'm going to start upper left again of what I haven't used. So BC is equal to BC. And even without looking, I could see that same thing on both sides. It's going to be reflexive property. And it's of equality because there's the equal sign there. So that's what we're noticing. Number four, so I'm crossing this out as I'm using it. AB plus BC is equal to BC plus CD. Addition property of equality. I'm going to put PO equals sign. Okay, so I use this one starting up here again. Starting upper left. So upper left move down, upper left move down. Five. AB plus BC is equal to AC, and also BC plus CD equals BD. Segment addition postulate. Seg ad post. Sorry, crossed out the wrong one there. Haven't used this one yet. Then I'm going to substitute in 
Because remember, I'm trying to say AC is BD. No lose sight of what's going on here. AC is equal to BD. Six. Substitution. And seven. Got to make my middle line longer. AC is congruent to BD. Those are segments. So that was pretty that was pretty straightforward. We used them from left, sorry, from left top to right bottom. Used everything in sequence to form this two column proof. So now we're going to have to work backwards. And what we're going to have to remember is when we're making these flow charts, everything's going to have to flow from one another. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out with this. AC is congruent to BD. Okay, I'm going to check these off as I use them. And I've got to remember to put my reasons below. I'm just going to switch colors. You can draw the little fancy boxes if you'd like. And this is a given. Okay. Now, where do I go? Well, I noticed that these lines are the same. See how they have related elements, the AC and the BD? And so what I'm going to say is these are going to flow from one another. So I'm going to say AC is equal to BD because that's my next statement and I'm going to switch back to saying definition of congruent segments definition of congruent segs well I'm kind of you can kind of see I'm done with that line of thought now so I'm not my next line is related but it's got a bunch of different new elements and so that's what I'm going to know to start another column so what I'm going to say is AB plus BC equals AC. And then BC plus CD equals BD. My reasoning there is going to be segment addition postulate. Okay, so that's going to be my segment addition postulate. Well, notice this next line flows from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down. And I'm going to say AB plus BC is equal to BC plus CD. Once again, making sure I'm justifying everything I'm saying. So that's substitution. Okay. But notice, I've got to have something connect because I've got two lines of logic here. And so all of this is kind of flowing, once again, to the right. Okay. So I've used this. Do I have another line of logic here? Is this related to the line above? No, it's a completely kind of different thing. Still needed, but different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say BC is equal to BC. My reasoning there, reflexive property. And from that flows this line, okay? Because everything is kind of going this way. And this is the subtraction. Sorry, I got confused. That's my reason right there. So I've got to use my reasons first, or my statements first. So my statement is AB equal to CD. Reason then is subtraction property of equality. Notice I've checked these off as I've gone along and so now everything comes together to say AB is congruent to CD. Everything's nice and tidy because I've got a reason for all things so definition of congruent segments. Okay so all things being considered we've got this two column proof and every time I change a line of logic I know I'm going to end up with another column. The second part of this is paragraph proofs. We're going to talk about that in class. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.